right. Is that you? We've got the captain. We went looking for others, but there weren't any. We found one run across the roof, handled up in a vessel lumber that might have been a foxhole. His hands cut some. Who is it? John Albright! Hi! Who is it? It's John Albright! Praise be the living God, the God of the land and the oceans. For he in his mercy has answered our prayers and sent this man his only son. May his glory be known from shore to distant shore. This God sent the old man over and hung the door and went to the top of the river. Send him over with Tom Platt. <sighs> Captain Disco. Aye. What about the rest of the men on the Cape Pitman? What about them? And now. Do you think it would be too late, Mr. Salters, for a game of checkers? The very thing, the very thing I was thinking myself. Man, it beats all how you get into what's in the pants head. Oh, if it's okay with you, Mr. Salters, I'd like to be the red ones this time. Well, certainly, man. I was just thinking that myself. <laughs> <laughs> They're on their way to the Cushman Disco. Men, it's time we quit these crazy waters. I. There's ghosts out here, wandering spirits condemned to sail forever without ever finding Fiddler's Green. You heard of the Flying Dutchman, have you not? Did I mention Long Jack's fascination with all things supernatural? He thinks ghosts are everywhere. Well, there are, Danny boy! Everywhere! <laughs> oh, I'm not afraid of ghosts. Oh, you're not, are you? Have you heard of the legend of Finn the Cool Boy? Why, I felt his shiver right up his spine. That's enough, Jack. God in his heaven is gracious enough to hear the humble prayer of a fisherman for his boy. Well, he'll not leave us to the likes of Finn McCool. We've done well these last few weeks, men. And as long as I'm not mistook in my judgment, well, we ought to be able to top off tomorrow and head for home. Woo! We'll be the first off the banks again. Oh, the fleet's a goon we behind us. Game over already, Uncle? He fell asleep just like that. Sleep like a kitten. Some friend he is. Uncle Salters, is Penn really loony? Loony? Yeah, I wouldn't say that. Why do you care for him so? Care for him? Ah, I just look after him, that's all.
was once a preacher, but that was long ago. Doesn't much remember, see his mind is slow. But he could have been a beggar or a learned nobleman. Either way, in the end, he's my friend. Take a bowler, Mr. Penn. He's my friend.
we as breakfast, same as you. Oh, but I ate his. Well, I'm hungry. Where's mine? Eight years, too. <laughs> you ate my breakfast? Well, you can't keep leftovers with no ice aboard, can you? Smells. Yes, yeah, so do your boots, but I didn't eat them for breakfast. Sorry, Harvey. <laughs> look, Harvey. We're in town. You're right, Captain. It does look like a town. Well, I've seen bigger, but that's a hundred schooners and a thousand men. We're back together like sardines. Mmm, sardines. Haven't you had enough? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fishing's good here this time of year. It's on account of the capelin. Capelin? Yeah, it's big fish. They school around here about the ends of August, and the cod come in after the capelin, and the fishermen come in after the cod. It'll be a race to see who's first off the banks this year, if I mistrust my judgment. Dad's been first off the banks for the past nine years. Well, there's no sense in boasting, Dan. Then let the best fisherman in the fleet be the first home. <laughs> right and just, just and right. Although, I mistrust that we're here does have a bit of a reputation to defend. <laughs> From the tip of her bowsprit to the clue of her mainsail, she's the finest of the fleet. Well, you've learned a lot, young fella. You're as good as any man in the fleet. Better than some. It's true, Hart. You're the best story made a man could ask for. Though I never would have thought it seeing you for the first time. I learned a lot of it from you, you know. Oh, I know. Didn't think I was gonna let you forget that, did ya? No, and I got no breakfast to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Platt, what jabs, Mon? 132 for us, Disco. 132, alright. Ah, uh, they struck on quick today. Yeah. <laughs> One forty one for Manuel. <laughs> <laughs> one forty one, all right. How'd you do this morning, Salters? Forty nine. <laughs> What's that, Salters? I didn't quite hear ya. Forty nine, I said. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, get it out of your system. <laughs> Penn and I just may be planting potatoes this time next year. Hope you get more than 49 taters, farmer. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Mr. Salters, I believe it was 39. Shut <laughs> <laughs> up, man. Who was counting near you? <laughs> I was. Shut uh. up anyway. Uh. Well, men, based on my figuring, look at that hole. I'd say we're topping. Whoa! Yo -ho, we're first off the banks again, Disco. You know the what that? The rest of the fleet is a week behind. You know what that means? We're going home. Woo! <laughs> Ahoy! <laughs> we're heading in. Let's sing it, mates. It's the song you can only sing when you're first off the banks. <laughs> Too long now, I declare. But now we're bound for Gloucester and our loved ones waiting there. I long to see my Mary much more than she would know. So hoist the anchor and the sail and tell the wind to blow. Hi, I yo ho. And the anchor's off the ground 
need your help over here. Ah, uh, Harvey, come over here a minute, will you? Yes, Captain? Well, you've learned a lot since you've been aboard, young fella. You've more than earned your keep. But there's one job you haven't learned yet. And what's that, Captain? Well, you haven't learned the helm. I imagine you've earned the ride. Me? Sure. Any good seaman needs to know how to skipper a packet like this. You've seen me do it plenty of times. Well, keep her pointed for home, and I got some more figuring to do. Yes, sir. I mean, aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> ah, it is beautiful to see how he takes to it. I lay my wage and share. It's more than half pay acting to him. Well, ain't that how we all began? Acting it out till we're old enough, and making believe till we've cheated ourselves into being men. And then right on the same way till we're done. <laughs> Look at him. Reminds me of my first watch on the old Ohio. Plus <laughs> <laughs> Harper watch for sure, but I was feeling finer than Farragut. Guess you just took in your judgment for what, Disco? What wrong name makes tell us Kim is crazy? Well, he was. He's crazy to loom with Harper watch. I reckon he sobered up considerable sense. Look at me. I'm driving this packet. Me. Harvey Chain, skipper of the We're Here. Look at me now, look at me now, I am flying. Free as a bird, free as the wind that blows. Hardly a care, lighter than air, I am floating. Higher than air. Dad sells her this late is when we're off the banks and bound for home. Hey, you're not sleeping, are you? No, I'm not sleeping. Well, are you feeling sick? No, I guess I feel all right. Well, something's eating at you. I can tell. I'm just thinking about things, that's all. Well, thinking about what? Home and my parents. How come thinking about that kind of stuff makes you look like you're downwind of a bucket of fish heads? <laughs> I haven't seen you looking so pained since Dad whooped you when you first came aboard. I'm just wondering what's going to happen to me when I get home. Well, I'll tell you, Harv. You'll see your parents and have all your dad's money again. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing my parents. I miss them something awful. 
But all that money is... Just... Hey, you wasn't lying about them cars and your dad's money. Uh, Harvey, you swore to it. No, it's all true. It's just... I... Just what? I just don't feel the same way about it anymore. I feel like there's some things money just can't buy. Whew! You are doing some powerful thinking. I just feel like there's something different about me, Dan. I just don't know what it is. I know what it is, Harv. You do? Well, sure. I saw it in your eyes and you were first skipper in the weir here. First time Dad let me drive her, it did something to me, too. Now that's a feeling money can't buy. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, I'm different because of all of this. You're a sailor now, Harv. Yeah, I guess so. You know that ten and a half a month your dad's paying me? That means more to me than all the money my dad has. And I'd even come back to sail with you even if you didn't pay me. You would? Well, of course. Guess we're pals then? Pals for life. Listen, Harv. Remember what I told you. Every creek for a rigging, every sail slapping the rope. Did you hear it? <laughs> listen, listen. Hear what you've been missing. Listen to the rigging and the rails. Whispering, creaking. Listen, Harv, she's speaking. Tell him something only she can tell. If you lend her an ear, she will teach you. to learn how to hear. What do you think she's saying? Well, that's something you have to figure out for yourself, Harv. Listen, listen, hear the stovepipe hissing. Listen to the shifting of the wood. Twisting, groaning, listen, Harv, she's moaning. Saying something with each passing swell. In the slap of her sails, she has hundreds of tales. If you listen, you will hear her well. She can tell you stories. About the past and present glories of a Grand Bank schooner making way. And she'll discuss the worth of every port and every berth from Halifax to Sandy Bay. She surely knows the name of every man who reefs her main, and she'll tell you who does it best. Go ahead, put her to the test. Just cock your ear a little bit and listen real close for it, and let her do the rest. Just listen, listen, now I think she's whispering, listen to the jib and mainsail play, bluffing, flapping, it's almost like she's laughing, slapping. Plenty to say if you listen, you will hear her well. You know. I think there really is something magical about this old ship. Oh, there sure is. You know, she belonged to my grandfather before she was dad's. And when I grow up, I want to be a skipper too. What do you want to do? Oh, I don't know. I've learned a lot in school, but I've also learned a lot out here. Well, 
Maybe you'll grow up to be a big typhoon, just like your dad. <laughs> you mean big tycoon? Oh, yeah, I guess. Don't make much difference to me. One's gathering up all the money it can, and the other's gathering up wind. In either case, it's the little guy that gets blown on. <laughs> yeah, but if I do become a big tycoon, I'll be a good one to help people like Jason Ollie and his boy. Help them buy a new packet, right and just, just and right style. Now you're talking. But then again, part of me doesn't ever want to leave this place. Part of you never will. But home does sound pretty nice right now. <sighs> We're running into the edge of a hot wave now. And I can smell the bayberries. You wait. You'll be hiring a boy to throw water on your windows to make you go to sleep. <laughs> what are you two yakking about? Well, lots of things, Dad. Like the weir here. She's a noble packet. And home. Dan says he can smell the bayberries. Yeah, I can too. I reckon we'll see Thatcher's Island's light before dawn. Well, Long Jack's got the wheel, and I've got the watch. You boys go get some sleep. All right, Dad. But you wake us up at first sign of light. I will. Now go on now. Get going. All right. Hey, Harv, you want to trade bunks tonight? No, I've grown quite accustomed to all the lumps in my own. And I'd like to sleep in my own bed one more time. Sue yourself. Mine's better. Hey, Bears. Hey, Ben, I missed you. Yeah. 